Welcome to the last part of this series. How exciting. Here are some common questions that students ask me, as well as some myths, and then a little bit of serious business. So let's get to it. But my attending does this. Why did I get the question wrong? Thus exists the separation between testing and clinical medicine. I strongly suggest to you that you have a clinical brain and a test-taking brain, that they are separate, and that you know when to use which. It's hard to say on some of the information what's accurate and what's not. For instance, as some of the guidelines change for colonoscopy, if they change the age, when does that finally take place on standardized exams? When does that become the correct answer? Hard to say. Consider for a moment that an experienced physician is assessing far more than just the few simple variables found in a question stem. They may have had a poor outcome at one point, or they may know of some new evidence. Again, this is practicing medicine versus a standardized exam. When you're in clinic, do as your attending would do, but understand that on the test you need to know what the standardized exam answer would be. Where else would I have learned the information in this question? The answer, for me, is nowhere. You can read books. You can find some really big, thick, crazy books to read. That's not what I did. I learned from questions, and questions alone. I learned from questions I got right or wrong. So long as you know how to break questions down if you get them wrong, it becomes structured very much like a textbook. Now, as previously discussed, to be a good clinician, you do need to develop the clinical brain. But that's not what we're doing here. We're trying to get you through these tests and get you some better scores, so let's focus on that. Myth. I have no problem with timing. I don't need a pacing system. False. Reading too fast can be equally detrimental. You see a flashy buzzword, select an answer too fast, you don't see the information that's ruling that answer choice out, and you get it wrong. Again, take yourself through the diagnostics of why I got this question wrong. and Be honest with yourself about why you missed the question. If you're failing exams and you have an hour to spare on a shelf, I can tell you right now you're moving way too fast and you're not catching the right amount of information. The method I teach takes some time and usually you need a full 90 seconds to get that done. So to bring this back, again, the whole shelf exam is 110 questions. It's 2 hours and 45 minutes. So my approach, one time through, no time spared, no breaks, and I give myself 15 minutes per 10 questions. I should be starting question 11 at 2.30. I should be starting question 21 at 2.15. And at 2 hours, I should be starting 31, etc., etc., etc. The math is very simple. It just builds up that way. Give yourself 15 minutes per 10 question block and stay on course the entire exam. Start there, then figure out what works for you. Why do they have to word it like that? I've been asking myself that since medical school started, especially since step one. If you'll recall in part five, we broke down the steps of questions. And a lot of the time they're asking you to deduce a diagnosis. Then they're asking you to take that diagnosis and extrapolate some of the pathology, etc. By listing five obscure wordings of different pathophysiologies in the answer choices, they're putting a second question in. Similar to in part five, you've got to figure out the diagnosis first, then you've got to read all these answer choices and figure out what disease are they representing there. This isn't like undergrad anymore where some of the answer choices are made up. Everything's real. You have to decide which disease lines up with which answer choice, and you got to figure some of that out pretty quickly. I'll admit it's challenging, but that's what we've been tasked to do. That's how you pass these exams. My favorite question, what is the best resource? False. There is no best resource. And it's true. The best resource is the one that works for you. You have to use it to completion. Using five different resources is not beneficial. You need to hone it down to really truly one question bank. There are a few shelf exams where it's, it's appropriate to have two question banks. I'm thinking of family medicine for one. Using one of the question banks to completion allows you to see all the topics and find your areas of weakness. Most of them do a pretty good job of explaining, and I think we know which ones are better than others. 
off the record you world and amboss i've seen both you can use either i wouldn't split your time 50 50 i would use one of them really really diligently the next part of this is someone saying yeah i can do 1500 questions in a week this is about quality not quantity it takes me one hour to do a 40 question block timed and it takes me an hour and a half to go back and review that that's two and a half hours per 40 questions any faster than that, I'm missing details. Any slower than that, I'm not getting through enough material in the month to do well on shelf. That was the balance I found. Again, you need to find what works best for you. These resources are all content-based. They're teaching you clinical medicine. That's great. That's what we're here to learn. However, I've seen more colleagues struggle with the test-taking strategy than I have with isolated knowledge deficit. Usually if someone has knowledge deficit, they have test-taking strategy problems as well. You have to solve both in that situation. My argument is that you can't learn the clinical information if you're not able to break down the questions properly. So in these past few parts, I've taught you how to minimize the careless mistakes and isolate what it is you need to work on. All right, so here's the tough topic. Here's the serious business. Anxiety and depression. Nobody wants to talk about it because nobody has it. Everyone around you looks like they're just they're just going to tough it out. It can be extremely difficult to balance a tough rotation and schedule with shelf studying. Your buddy might be working 20 hours a week and you're working 60. You're taking the same exam at the end of the month. It sucks. So in the case of anxiety, you've got to develop some confidence. Using this method, practicing this sport, you get better at it every day. And when you go into these exams... You've got to know I've been practicing the right way. I'm solid in my methods. Even though I'm a little anxious, I can do this. That's the key to overcoming the anxiety. Depression. You should know about it. You should know your SIGI caps for your psych shelf. When I started my third year of medical school and I failed my first shelf, I can definitely say I was depressed. That might be the toughest thing I went through in medical school, which surprised me. I thought step one was going to be the hardest thing I went through. But I got through that, and now here I am struggling with these shelf exams. What the heck? So I can tell you from experience, you are not alone. Step one of all of this is self-care, getting good sleep, eating good food. You have to take care of yourself. The second thing is friends. Talk to your friends. They know what you're going through. Talk to them. Talk to me, your dog, your fish, your cat, your mom, whatever. My email's at the end of this video. Email me anytime. Then keep watching all of these videos so you learn how to take these tests, gain some confidence, and move on. If things are getting really serious, you need to seek professional help. Your school has a counselor. Your school has resources for this. Utilize it. Last but not least, thank you. Teaching is my passion. I put all of this material together on my own, and it all comes back to your success. So please, please, please email me your success stories. I live for those messages. If you made it through all of these videos and you appreciated it, please do send me an email. Let me know what you think. Let me know what improvements I can make. Email me at steptestseth at gmail.com. Until then, I'll see you guys in the YouTube comments and I'll see you in future videos.